It's only two weeks into 2024, but already VNM are off to a strong start. I have with me in the studio three of their latest products: the VNM GT steering wheel, VNM direct drive wheelbase, and VNM sequential shifter. And I should point out that the shifter and the steering wheel are pretty much production ready, but this is very much a prototype direct drive wheelbase. And if you've been following the VNM on their Discord, you'll know that they've made great strides in their direct drive program, and we are expecting a full release of their wheelbase sometime this year, which I'm very excited about. Big, big thank you to Racecraft and VNM for this behind the scenes look, and be sure to like and subscribe if you want more exclusive content. But let's not waste any more time, let's take a closer look at all of this. All right, let's start with the VNM direct drive wheelbase. So this might surprise some of you to know that VNM were working on a direct drive wheelbase, but when I joined their Discord nearly three years ago, they were very involved in the homebrew scene. So they were developing encoders, PCBs, and software to help people drive their own DIY direct drive projects. So it was no surprise that they started to trickle out their developments with their own DD program. And not too long ago, they posted this particular prototype on their Facebook page. And I wanna put it out there, I won't have a chance to drive this uh, for the scope of this video because I'm actually moving the studio tomorrow. But I will be driving the steering wheel and the shifter. But yes, so this prototype has been documented to output a peak of 26 Newton meters of torque. And they've actually um, sent some details of a updated system, which has a different servo and that actually has 32 Newton meters of torque. So very much what I would consider very high end torque outputs. And I don't really know where that actually stands in terms of their overall product range. Are they just ditching the 26 Newton meter and going straight to the high end 32? Or are they gonna have a tiered system with like a 32, a 26, and probably something like a 18 Newton meter system? Only time will tell. I don't have any inside information at this point, but I am very, very uh, pleased to have this prototype in front of me. Um, there's definitely a couple of things that we can look at. Keeping in mind, this is a prototype, so a lot is probably gonna change from this to what you can actually buy uh, and put into your rig probably in a few months time. But we can see, first of all, the design. Um, it has a round shape with these ribs on the side. I really like it. It sets it aside from the competitors but the uh, updated photos of the 32 Newton meter system actually show something that looks a, a lot more similar to a Simucube or a Simagic with just the, the straight rectangular edges. So I really hope that they keep this round design because I think it looks really awesome. But one thing to keep in mind is that we have the servo here and we can see VNM have built the encoder, the control systems, all of that onto the back of it. So there is no separate control unit, which means that this is gonna be a really neat and tidy system. There is just a power brick that goes into this um, Molex power connector here. Then we've got plugs on this side for the emergency stop, CAN bus, and a USB type B. So if we look at the front, this is where it really shows that it is a development prototype. And again, it's just so cool to, to have something like this. This is a piece of history, I would say. But yeah, so there's no quick release on this. It's just got the mounts on here to actually fix a steering wheel to the shaft, which they were using during their development. In terms of size, keeping in mind that this is a prototype and things will change, it's quite a bit bulkier than this Simagic Alpha Mini, which makes sense because it has more than double the torque. And then compared to the Fanatec DD1, it is a little bit more compact than that. Let's look now at the VNM GT steering wheel. So this product is what I think shows that VNM really means business because this looks as good as any other steering wheel I can think of on the market. But there are two obvious competing products that I think it's worth comparing against. One is the Fanatec Formula V2 and the other is the Simagic FX. And the reason I chose these two is one, I have them in the studio, but also uh, between the Simagic and the VNM, they actually look quite alike and they're fairly similarly specced. But with the Fanatec, I'm sure that this is gonna come in at a price point lower than the VNM. Uh, so we have to keep that in mind. But also there's a lot of these out there in your sim rigs at home. So I think a lot of you would actually have this point of reference to compare. So um, just for clarity, this is my personal daily driver. And I do actually really like the Fanatec Formula V2. 
but there's two things that really bug me about the wheel. And the first is the rotary encoders. So these are so light that it's very easy to accidentally bump them while driving. And you, you don't realize it until a few laps later when your fuel trims are out of whack or your brake balance or so on. Um, and the other is that they don't register inputs in a intuitive way. So um, the end result is that I don't bind these thumb encoders to anything. So I essentially don't have thumb encoders on my Formula V2. And the second thing is the construction. So um, the Fanatec has a, a black plastic housing and you can hear it creak and groan. And you can also hear the creaking and groaning as you drive as well. So that kind of just takes you a bit out of the uh, immersion. Um, now, if we actually look at these two uh, steering wheels, they're a lot more solid. You can, you can feel that straight away when you're driving. So that's a really, really big plus. And another thing is that these encoders have a very positive touch. I just wanted you to hear that click. And there are only one pair of thumb encoders here, whereas you have two pairs on the Simagic FX. Um, that being said, if you count the number of funky switches encoders on the VNM, you actually end up with the same number of rotary inputs as on the Simagic. So those two are about the same. Um, another thing I wanted to point out is that both the Fanatec and the Simagic have gone for an open bottom uh, steering wheel design, whereas VNM have gone for the closed bottom, which I really much prefer because having closed bottom just gives you more um, stiffness in the steering wheel. And admittedly, Symagic do a pretty good job. The FX steering wheel is really stiff, and I will uh, put a review eventually on my channel. But um, the Fanatec in particular does have some flex in the handles as well. So definitely usable. It is still my daily driver and I still like it, but it does have flaws that I think do need to be discussed. Anyway, um, so with the VNM, let's talk about the buttons. So they are RGB backlit just like the Simagic, but there's a couple of key differences. So one, if you have a listen, they have quite a long travel in the button push, whereas the Simagic has a very, very short amount of travel. I don't think one is better than the other. It's really personal preference, and I don't think the button travel is going to be the deal breaker whether you choose one or the other. But that was something interesting that I observed. Um, another thing is that at the moment, the RGB LEDs are set to rainbow, so they're just cycling through colors as we speak. Um, with the Symagic, I was able to individually assign colors per button, which I haven't seen an option for in the VNM software, but no doubt VNM are working on that and will implement that soon. Um, but yeah, ultimately, um, I drove with this for a little bit and I have zero complaints about it. The button and the encoder placements are really ergonomic and the wheel worked flawlessly. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it off my stand here. And I'm actually going to unplug the USB cable. So the RGBs are going to switch off. There we go. So that's how it looks. Now let's go ahead and have a look at the back. So the USB connector at the bottom is the exact same connector you get on the VNM pedal control box. And I really, really like it. It has a really positive push. You know when you've got it connected. And then of course the screw collar means it's not going to go anywhere when you're driving. Um, there is a USB-C port here. Don't quote me on this. I'm guessing they have the same functionality, uh, but of course you'll only want to use the uh, screw collar secured USB connection when you're actually driving. There is a button on the back here. I think this is for wireless pairing. I know that the steering wheel does have wireless functionality with the VNM direct drive wheelbases. I don't know anything more about the protocol there. Um, at the moment, there is a Symagic quick release mounted to the back of this, but in the uh, base of the steering wheel, there is actually a PCB with a little pin connector for a plug that goes through the QRs. So VNM have opened up the possibility of running power and or data through the steering column, which I'm interested to see how they implement that. I don't have any information about that just yet. Um, now, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. This integrated hub spacer 
is part of the body. So there's actually no separate bolts connecting this hub extender to the body. So nice and clean. And at the moment I have the Symagic QR connected via four bolts because I couldn't fit bolts uh, here on the sides because the shifters were getting in the way. Um, no complaints about that. This is not a unique issue to the VNM wheel. I know that a lot of other wheels do experience that. And four bolts I think is plenty for mounting. Now let's have a look at the shifters. So at the bottom we have a couple of clutches and on the top a couple of magnetic shifters. And one thing that I thought was really cool about this is that there's these little thumb knobs that are very easy to adjust and what these control are the shift throw. So you can actually tighten this up and all of a sudden you've got a very short throw compared to the other side. And so having adjustable throw I think is just a really cool option. It doesn't really change anything for me in terms of the driving experience. Um, again, I don't think the feel of the shifter is gonna be the deciding factor in what you choose, whether you go for the VNM, the Symagic, or any other wheel. Um, one thing I do wanna to touch on is that um, everything is anodized aluminum. So the front plate is aluminum instead of the carbon fiber on the two plates that you saw just before. Um, and if we have a look at the back, the uh, shift paddles themselves also anodized aluminum and they actually have slotted mounting holes so you can actually control how far in or out you mount them and i think carbon fiber is one of those things that just gets uh, overused in the sim racing world i for one am fine with black anodized aluminum I know that a few years ago, uh, Fanatec uh, had some QC issues with their carbon fiber paddles where the uh, paddles themselves would actually sort of rip and bend. And you'll never get that with these aluminium paddles. So that's a big plus for me. And I definitely did enjoy using this steering wheel. I don't have any pricing information for you guys at the moment, but knowing VNM, I reckon it's going to be at a pretty good price point and I think it's definitely worth a look. So stay tuned, this is a really exciting product from Vienna. All right, let's talk about the VNM sequential shifter. So VNM's very first product was the H shifter, which has a sequential shifting mode, but it is a little bit fiddly to switch from H to sequential mode. So I actually leave mine in H pattern mode all the time. Um, and so I was pretty pleased to see that VNM developed their own dedicated sequential shifter and they released a unboxing video as well as a look at the internals not that long ago. And I'll link that up here, have a look at that. Um, now, I'm not gonna be doing a teardown because I'm not that mechanically minded and I don't want to take apart something that I can't put back together. But yes, um, I drove with this for a couple of hours and I have zero complaints with it at all. Um, it's very simple. There's really not much that I ask for from a sequential shifter. It has an upshift, a downshift, a neutral release, and it has a adjustment bolt here for the shift tension. And that's all it really needs to do. It's a little bit noisy as I think all sequential shifters are on the market, but yeah, the, the shift action is really positive. You get a really nice click when you engage a gear. Um, it does have an RGB emblem on the front, which out of the box just cycles through the colors. There's a couple of different patterns that you can choose when you use the VNM config app, which is completely optional because this thing just works straight out of the box. You don't need any drivers or anything like that at all. Um, I'm going to uh, unplug the USB so the RGB is going to switch off there. Let's have a look at the back. So we can see that there's actually two USB-C ports. So one of them would be for diagnostics. One is for connecting to your PC. There's a little reset button up the top as well, which I haven't needed to use so far. Um, now, in terms of the construction, it's all anodized aluminium and, uh, you know, VNM are really showing that they can get their fit and their tolerances really good because everything's just really nice and tight and I really like that. Now let's talk about mounting. So at the moment I have these red plates which come in the box and these are mounted to the bottom and that allows me to just sit that on top of the aluminum profile shifter mount that I have and bolt that straight down. Super solid, no complaints, really nice and simple. Um, if you don't have a aluminum profile shifter arm or if you have like a shifter mount plate instead, then there are 10 threaded holes on the base of the shifter. These are all M5 and between you know, all 10 of them, you're bound to find a combination that matches the pre-drilling of your shifter mount. 
Uh, one thing that I will say though is that with the um, M5 threading, when I mounted these plates onto them, one of them spun through really, really easily, and the other three were just catching a little bit. And I think what's happening is the black anodized finish is just getting in the way of the threads just a little bit. Not enough to stop the bolts uh, screwing in at all, but enough to feel the difference between some of the holes. So if there's any room for improvement from VNM, I would probably say uh, possibly to re-machine the M5 thread holes, just to make sure that the surface finish doesn't actually get in the way of you mounting it at home. But yeah, that pretty much sums up my thoughts on the sequential shifter. Um, it was a pretty short one because it's a simple product that works well, and I think there's not really much else to say about that. Um, as I spend more time with it, I may possibly put out a full review, but I don't know that there's really a lot more to be said about it. It's a very solid build, it works really well, it's exactly what I asked for in a sequential shifter. So there you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed this first look at some of this brand new hardware from VNM. I think the take home message is be excited about 2024 because a lot of stuff is coming and I really like the direction that VNM is heading in. Uh, big, big thank you to Racecraft and VNM for trusting me to demonstrate this to you. And of course, like and subscribe because I'm going to do my best to bring really interesting content to you over the next year. Thanks so much. See you in the next video.